Why la di why? Di why encore? Ça toujours? Mais ça bien va moins? Today you will be hearing briefly about each event by event coordinators and they will be talking briefly because we have so many events to go through today. Also, we have two of our sponsors who will be sharing their, what they think about the Nobel Laureate and Festival and why they are participating and assisting us and we thank you both very much. But first, I would like to invite the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee Chair, Her Excellency Dame Pellet Louisi, to give her opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, eight days ago, we entered the fifth decade since a native son of ours was awarded a Nobel Prize, one of the world's most prestigious awards. Two decades later, we earned a second Nobel Prize. Many the world over continue to marvel at this phenomenal achievement for so small a country as ours. As indeed it is, and we are justifiably proud. Sir Arthur and Sir Derek have shown what is possible if we can set our sights right and focus on our goals and on the journey ahead. We have been celebrating their achievements for the past 27 years and have, through our various and varied events, endeavored to nurture, cultivate, and encourage a deeper appreciation of the notion of excellence in all spheres of our personal, collective, and national lives. It is for this reason that we have kept as our recurring theme the celebration of excellence. Our sub-theme this year is, surprise, Vision 2020. As we recognize that clarity of purpose which energized their work, that vision which they both had for what was possible and what they wanted to achieve. That vision which no doubt they have or they had fine-tuned along that journey of excellence, led them to the zenith of their career and their achievements, which we celebrate, especially during our annual observances of Nobel Laureate Festival. Um, those of you who have been there long enough with us would know that we started as Nobel Laureate Day. It was just the one day, January 23rd. Then we graduated to Nobel Laureate Week, and now, here we are, Nobel Laureate Festival. We might perhaps be like the United Nations and declare one of these days Nobel Laureate Year. <laughs> Let us remember, however, that excellence is not just a destination, but a journey. The notion of pursuing excellence requires that we constantly fine tune our craft, whatever that craft may be until we near perfection. That journey and these achievements of our laureate should be our inspiration. Had they lived, Sir Arthur would have been 105 years old and Sir Derek 90 years old this January 23rd. Let not their years relegate them to the backwaters of history and our memory. Instead, let it inspire us to believe that the longer we live, the more opp opportunities we perhaps have of excelling. Sir Derek, of course, had always been known as a man of arts and letters. But let us not forget that Sir Arthur was not only an economist, but a cultural activist as well. He had the foresight to warn that Utilitarianism is not the be-all and the end-all of development, as some may think. For, in his view, a society without the creative arts is a cultural desert. Indeed, 
Many have been unapologetic in warning that those who ignore the nexus between culture and development do so at their peril. Let us therefore build the type of resilience in the cultural realm that will bolster our economic development in these changing times. It's time for a sea change, and that's a, a pun on, on all words, climate change, sea change, cultural change, changing times. It is time for change. I am heartened, uh, indeed delighted, at the growing interest of the arts sector in the Nobel Laureate Festival. The arts community seems to have found a home in that celebration, judging by the increase in the number of requests for inclusion of their events in our program of activities. So we encourage and welcome their participation. We welcome, too, the contribution of the private sector to our festival. This year, we welcome, in particular, the Bank of St. Lucia for its very generous sponsorship of the Sir Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture and, by extension, our Nobel Laureate Festival. And you could see their presence. <laughs> it is a partnership which we would dearly love to nurture and sustain. I'm looking at the representative of the Bank of St. Lucia as I speak. First Citizens Investment Services St. Lucia branch, Mr. Birchsmith, um, well, not Mr. Birchsmith, but the, the St. Lucia branch, has been with us for many years now with their contribution to the Walcott Schools Festival. This particular partnership is now well cemented, and we express our gratitude to the country managers with whom we have had the pleasure to work. We look forward to our continued partnership. In closing, let, allow me to express sincerest thanks to all the coordinators of this year's um, events for the festival and our partners as well. And just, um, well, I don't want to say for publicity purposes, but so that the, um, the public knows who is involved in our festivities. I would thank the government of St. Lucia uh, for uh, the subvention, financial subvention, the Bank of St. Lucia, the Cultural Development Foundation, the Ministry of Education, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, First Citizens Investment Services, the St. Lucia National Trust, the National, the National Archives Authority of St. Lucia, St. Mary's College, the Open Campus of the University of the West Indies, St. Lucia, the estate of the late Professor Patricia Ismond, the Library Development Foundation, the Denry Development Foundation, Choice TV, 758 Books, the Office of the Governor General, and the National Television Network. I wish you all a successful festival this year. Let's apply 2020 vision to our celebrations this year and beyond. And in closing, closing, let me thank the media for responding, as they have always done, um, to our invitation to this launch. And let's hope that um, going, I heard the expression going forward, but that's just what came to mind. Let's hope that in the next two, two weeks, we will be, you know, you'll be keeping up the hype and the vibe and getting people excited uh, about the festival. And it is for a reason that we call it a festival, you know. We want some hype and vibe and festivities and action. Thank you very much. Every year, for Citizens makes it a priority to participate in this, what I call, extremely important event on the calendar of events of St. Lucia. Because Nobel Laureate's week 
or Nobel Laureate Festival, rather, it used to be a week when I was growing up, is just an indication of the tremendous work that the committee has done to really grow it into a festival. It really represents who we are and who we should aspire to be. And as an indigenous institution, headquartered in Trinidad and Tobago, of course, but operating out of St. Lucia now for about 16 years, it is our mandate to be a part of ensuring that our culture continues to grow. And there's no better expression of our culture, no better appreciation of our culture, where we are, where we've come from as a people, and where we're going than, Nobel, than the Nobel Laureate Festival. As a young man, when I went to Sir Arthur, I studied Walcott for the first time when I did literature. And at first, I was a little confused by his poetry. But it really required that you look inward and you find deeper meaning. And I think right now, a lot of the problems that we have in today's society require a lot of us take a step back and look within and see where we are going wrong and see where we can make contributions. And I think that's the, le the lesson that Walker taught us. That's why I think Nobel Laureates Week, I keep calling it week, sorry. The festival is not only important from the standpoint of a celebration of the accomplishments of these two esteemed gentlemen, but it's really a time for us to step back and take a look and see where we want to go as a society. And I think that's the lesson that Sir Arthur Lewis taught us, you know, coming from a small island to the point, to, 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 to a place where his economic theory is still gospel in many places. And Sir Derek Walcott, whose literature has allowed us or has given us the opportunity to really look within, see what we are as Lucians, descendants of Afri Africans, and see how we can move forward. So once again, we are pleased and we are privileged to be a part of the festival. And I want to commend the planning committee under the patronage of Her Excellency Dame, um, Dame Paulet Louisi, along with all the other members of her team. Good job, folks, and I wish you all the best. And we hope to be a part of the festival going forward. Banca St. Lucia has been a supporting partner of the Nobel Laureate Festival for many years. In fact, it's well over a decade. This year, we are pleased to lend support to the festival activities to the tune of $10,000. And it, in particular, it will go towards the Sir Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture. We are humbled to be afforded this opportunity to once again partner on an initiative which honors the legacy of two of the most distinguished sons of the soil, soil our Nobel laureates Sir William Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Alton Walcott. As an indigenous financial institution, our origins are deeply rooted in this very soil, and this is why it is important to us to continue supporting observances such as this one. For us, the decision to partner with the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee is always an easy one, because the essence of this festival is a celebration of our people, of who we are, and most importantly, a recognition of the tremendous potential that lie within us. The achievements of our Nobel laureates are a clear testament to our potential and showcasing their work as we are doing through the commendable initiatives of the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee goes a long way in building the confidence of our nation, particularly the confidence of the primarily young population that they too can aspire to the highest levels of their respective fields of endeavor. May this observance continue to inspire and ignite the academic, creative, and artistic pursuits of our young people. We look forward to the activities of this year and remain committed to supporting in the years to come. This year, Derek would have been celebrating his 90th birthday as Dame Permet Prolette already mentioned. If he were here, still here today, I am sure he would once again declare his love and hopes for St. Lucia, especially in encouraging the talented artists that we have. Um, I just wanted to mention that Jalim Yudevik is working on designing a memorial for Derek's gravesite on Morn Fortun. Also in progress is a Derek Walcott reading room that will 
houses collection of books on poetry, Caribbean literature, and art for all to use and enjoy. I thank you all who have worked and coordinated tirelessly on the many Nobel events. Do you know why our Nobel laureate achievements are important worldwide? A lot of people assume they know the answer to this. And so the committee decided we were going to take five simple questions, basic questions that people make assumptions about and then get what we call authorities to answer them. So we have our committee members, uh, Kentilia Louis, Margot Thomas, um, we had somebody else, and uh, Drenia, Fre Drenia Frederick, and poet Vladimir Lucien. And they came to choice and answered one question in five minutes. So that program is going to be airing from this Friday and next week and then repeated at 8.55, shortly before the prime news, prime time news. So 7.55, 7.55, so just before choice news now. And we invite everyone to take a look at that. And also, it's going to be available on the Facebook page, St. Lucia Nobel Laureate Festival. So please, if you have not liked the page, go there now. And that will give you the program of events and show you these programs. Thank you. So in chronological date order, I invite the members of the festival committee to approach and briefly tell everyone about your event. I have created a dance brand called Sure, and it is with this brand that I want to c com connect all of the dance groups in St. Lucia. I'm so tired of these barriers that we create, not only, not only because I'm in one group means I cannot dance for another group or I cannot learn from someone else. Like St. Lucia is too small to do this. So with the Sure experience, which is going down this Saturday, January 11th, from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., I will be Sorry. I will be bringing down international choreographers from the States and from Barbados to work with dancers in St. Lucia. And it is a cultural exchange. So we also have two local choreographers working with us as well. So the, the program goes like this. We have Gideon Ambrose from Silver Shadow, also known as Gina, and he will be doing a hip hop fundamentals class. Then we have Jamie Ford from Helen Folk. He will be teaching a traditional folk like our St. Lucian culture, and not only to the, to the participants, but to the international choreographers as well. So that's where the culture exchange comes in. After that, we have a performance by XO Nads and then by Ezra the Fun Machine, so that the international choreographers can also get a taste of what it is to be St. Lucian. After that, we have Royal G from Barbados. She will be teaching a soca segment. Then we have Chris Gale from Barbados, not the Jamaican cricketer. <laughs> She will be teaching a contempt pop class. So it's contemporary dance mixed with hip hop. And she has toured with Disney. She has toured with America's Got Talent. So many artists, it's unbelievable. And she's only 21. And we, to end the show, we have TSU Terry from the States. He was there for the first um, share experience and he's coming back. He will be teaching a Baltimore hip hop class where the, the movement is focused on the footwork. And at the end, all the money from the ticket sales goes directly into the dance community where I'll be purchasing dance gear and dance necessities for dancers in St. Lucia as I feel like not much or not enough is being done for dancers in St. Lucia. So I encourage you to speak to your kids, your family members about this event as it is for a good cause. So it'll be on January 11th from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And this will not be possible without my sponsors, which was very difficult to get, by the way. I believe in St. Lucia, it's so difficult to get sponsorship for theater or dance activities. And especially as a young person, starting off something totally different. People ask me, like a dance workshop? What is this? So to come up with a new idea for the youth and for dancers in St. Lucia was difficult, so I want to thank these sponsors deeply from my heart. Digicel, Domino's Pizza, JQ Rodney Bay Mall, St. James Club, Media Zone, Radio Caribbean International, FJB Events and Rentals, Sagical Life Insurance, Party Freak Entertainment, Massey Stores, Jay Bagas, St. Lucia's Teachers Credit Union, 
Drive Time Car Rental, Coco Palm, Ministry of Education, Mind of Xavier and Gene and Photography. And a new sponsor who just came on board, Bellevue Hotel. So I encourage you to come out, even if you are not interested in dance, it's $80. If you want to be an audience member, that's fine. It's still $80. If you want to participate, it's $80. It will be at the Sportivo Rodney Heights, at the Sportivo Studio in Rodney Heights from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So come out. My name is Jermaine Joseph. I am the Program Officer for Built Heritage for the St. Lucia National Trust. And I'm here to present um, the events that the Trust will be um, hosting for the next uh, two weeks. Um, our first we begin the ob observance of the Nobel Laureate F Festival um, on Monday, 13th January at 10 a.m. with an open invite to schools island-wide to visit uh, the house and um, experience a Walcott House with um, our cultural, our sketches, um, an audiovisual uh, presentation of Sir Derek's work and also so Roger, Mr. Roderick Walcott's work. Um, on the evening of May, of, sorry, of Monday 13th, 2020 at 7 p.m., we'll also be hosting an event called Kindling in, Under Walcott's Light, which will be showcasing our guest poets, Mr. Adrian Oje, and uh, six poets from St. Lucia, young and up-and-coming artists who will be presenting their works. Um, they're all up on screen at the moment. Uh, we've got um, Mr. Glenn Shallery, Mr. Garner Raymond, uh, Mr. Rohan Bennett, Ms. Naomi Patrick Smith, uh, Mr. Anthony Tracy Avril, and Ms. Catherine Atkinson. As I said, they will all be presenting their works, their recent works. We will also be screening past lectures uh, by guest presenters discussing Sir Derek Walcott's. Uh, works and how it influenced their lives. So this will also be, this will be during the week of the 27th to the 31st of January. Um, and yeah, that's it. I, we invite everybody to come down and support and obviously immerse yourself in the experience. So Derek and also um, Sir Arthur Lewis um, contributed a great deal to our cultural heritage and our economic development. So please come out and support. As usual, we are grateful for the kind support of the Nobel Laureate Committee for this event. We have uh, a number of events. First of all, on the 13th of January, we have the school's music festival. And um, this year for the music festival, we have 14 schools participating. We have the Labay SDA Combined Choir, the Miku Primary School, Dame Paulette Louise Primary Choir, the La Quamengo Combined Choir, PI Combined, and um, Rosso Combined Choirs, Miku Secondary, the Patricia James Secondary, St. Mary's College Instrumental and Vocal Asab, the Canon Laurie Anglican School Choir, Ave Maria Primary Choir, St. Joseph's Convent Choir, um, View Fort Comprehensive Choir and the Castries Comprehensive Secondary Schools Choir. You see this year we have a lot of choirs out. Um, yes. And uh, they will be presenting um, an, an array of, of different um, songs, some local, local in terms of traditional as well as contemporary and of course international songs. And as always, this is always a very interesting event so we encourage you to come out 10 o'clock and it is free of charge to um, the general public on the tuesday the 14th we have the ministry of education's national awards of excellence and that activity is the the ministry's uh, way of recognizing excellence for the recently concluded academic year so that would be, have been um, the 2018-2019 academic year. And uh, students are awarded uh, and schools are awarded prizes in terms of common entrance, CXC, Sir Arthur Lewis, tertiary level. And of course, the island schools are also at that time um, 
named. So that activity, again, will be at 10 a.m. at the National Cultural Center. This activity is by invitation only. This year, again, we have our, our Walk at Schools Festival, which will be on the 17th at 1 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. And uh, the production for this year, it is going to be a collaboration between USPAC and the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School Dancers. And the performance is called A Walk at Collage Seascapes. Now, those of you who have read the works of Walcott, you know that the sea is a major theme, a major motif for him. So what this does is that we have um, excerpts and um, adaptations of uh, various works of his, both from his plays and from his poetry, um, including The Sea is History, Homeros, The Star Apple Kingdom, The Sea at Dofe, Drums and Colors, Joker of Seville, and The Acacia Trees. And looking at the different personifications of the sea that he brings out in his work and the different uses of the sea. And this will be done through music, dance, and drama. And we welcome everyone to be part of that on um, the 17th at 1 p.m. as a contribution of $5. Of course, at the end of it, as we usually do, there's always a discussion because part of this is not just about performance. However, it's also about having an exchange and a learning process. So there's always a discussion afterwards with the cast and the crew as well as the audience. So we invite you to be a part of that. The Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition is the world's oldest international writing competition for schools established in 1883, with thousands of young people taking part every year. It is an important way to recognize achievement, elevate youth, voices, and develop key skills through creative writing. My name is Michelle N. Samuel, and I am the founder and president of Sled Terra. I am also a 2018 and 2019 competition judge and a promoter of the Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition in St. Lucia. In January 2019, my organization, Sled Terra, hosted the first ceremony which was held to identify the young writers who participated in the competition and to publicly recognize those who attained gold, silver, and bronze awards. Only the top senior, junior, gold, and winners runner-up, however, get to go to Buckingham Palace. In 2018, 10 young St. Lucian writers participated in the competition and six attained gold, silver, and bronze. Unfortunately, all 10 writers could not be identified and only six could have been recognized. So we had, of last year, um, Khadija Howell, Khadija Halliday, sorry, who got gold senior. We also had Ariel Albert, gold senior. We had Azoya Howell, junior gold, and Kishel August, junior silver. Coming on board for the recognition ceremony for last year was Easy Click Books, Sanu St. Lucia, St. Lucia Writers Forum, Trophy Center, the, Entrepreneurs, the Entrepreneurship Readiness Program, and a Ministry of Education representative was present to help distribute the prizes to the winners. The Education Minister was also present to deliver a congratulatory address to the students who were present. This year, my organization, Sled Terra, has once again embarked on the journey to identify and recognize the 2019 participants and the awardees. There were three participants in 2019, two of which attained gold. The event will be held on January 15th at the Central Library from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The agenda will be the introduction of the 2019 competition awardees, the reading of the submission, the winning entries, presentation of the prizes, and then finally the announcement of the 2020 Queen's Commonwealth competition theme and topics. Admission is $10, and I would like as many of you to attend this ceremony as we recognize our young writers. I am Dwight George, brand, brand ambassador for 758 Books, Cathy Literary. The book fair hosted as part of activities to mark the achievement of St. Lucia's two Nobel laureates was introduced in 2015 making this year our fifth anniversary. This literary fair 
was established to create an awareness of local writers, rekindle an interest in reading in the St. Lucian public, and assist in the, in the boosting of sales for local writers. Since its inauguration, the exhibition of local writers has continued annually with added feature, features to engage the public. One such feature is an exhibition of child authors with the main focus of introducing young authors to the public while celebrating the excellence of these young authors. Furthermore, the exhibition engages the writers in activities which allows them to demonstrate in appreciation for reading and writing, explore their creativity through the word, and give consideration to careers in genres of the arts. The 2020 installation of the Nobel Laureate Festival will once again feature the book fair, which has now become a staple event. It is hoped that the exhibition of child authors will teach young children the significance of reading. The exhibition this year will be held under the theme Vision 2020, celebrating excellence, and will be held at 758 Books Cafe Literary in Sunny Acres, Gable Woods Mall. This will be held during, between January 19th and 31st. This year, the program will include the exhibition of St. Lucian authors, including books by ch child authors, and expand with a seminar for the young authors. The exhibition of books by St. Lucian authors, exhibition, the exhibition of books by child authors during Youth Month festivities, open sessions with authors, creative presentations to young authors and prospective young writers by noted professionals on the rudiments of public speaking. The exhibition will display a variety of publications by St. Lucia writers and books, which will also be available for sale. We'll also be hosting, hosting the Meet the Offers on between the January 19th and 31st exhibition. The intention of the seminar is to equip young writers with skills which would assist them in public speaking. The art of speaking will be encouraged as a significant step towards improving communication and critical thinking skills, boosting confidence, career advancement, as well as expanding one's professional network. Young writers will meet and interact with noted public speakers in St. Lucia. The professionals will, in, will provide tips on impro, in, improving the arts of speaking with young writers through a variety of presentations on speaking in public. 758 Books is pleased to partner with a number of key resource persons, including Hippolyte Vitalis, Jerry George, Claudius Francis, and Jason Joseph, who would assist with those seminars. 758 Books Café Literary Vision 2020 highlights International Women's Day, Youth Month, Caribbean Book Fair in July, the launching of two books, Laughing in the Face of Cancer, and Wood Planting by Kendall Hippolyte in Soufray. All this made possible with our partners, Valmore, Substation, Success Gateway, Gable Woods Mall, and Friends of 758. We will also be hosting the Night of the Arts, which I will now invite my colleague. On February 2nd at 758 Books, we're going to have a talent at showcase called Rhapsody. Um, the concept basically is to give um, particularly young people an avenue to express their talents. Um, this is cr crucially important because we do believe that arts don't, it not only forms character, it also saves lives. Um, I'm a personal testimony of that. Um, I probably wouldn't be here if not for the arts. It did save me, so I know what it can do for young people. I know the transformative um, power of the arts and how it can change the nation in itself. And we really don't have any avenues per se where we can have this kind of um, cross-pollination of arts where older people can pass on their skills to the younger. So we try and have that platform so that younger people can come and be inspired 
And we do believe also that the older guard, they are not appreciated as they should be in St. Lucia. And before they do leave us, we really want them to be able to pass on their genius onto the next generation. Um, also, there's a very talented group from Trinidad. I don't know if Mr. Bushmith would know them, to send movement. Um, they known around the Caribbean. They will be coming down for the festival. Yes, so they did hear about us. Um, but then I don't think that they are scheduling anywhere. Um, so I was contacted by them. I don't know what made them think I have clouds. But um, they want to be accommodated, but I can't accommodate them on the, uh, the, the platform that, I, that we're having. They come in between the 26th and the 31st. So if anybody wants to host a dynamic group from Trinidad that is known around the Caribbean, you can feel free to contact me and we can probably set it up. I am here to briefly tell you about our church service and breakfast. And for those who usually come to the press lunch, they will know that these two activities are staples on the Nobel Laureate calendar of events. The church service will be held at the Abbey of the Assumption of the Lady Kubari Mount of Prayer. And it will be held, the time is 7.45 on Sunday the 19th of January. So please make an effort to attend. Now, the breakfast will be held at the villa, which is part of the abbey. For short, we can say the abbey. The breakfast will be held at the villa, which is part of the abbey, and it is only $35. And I'm making a special plea to everyone present here to make an effort to support the committee and at the service, at the church service, you will also hear our Nobel Laureate song. And if possible, you will be entertained by a, a special attraction. I'm not going to say what this attraction is going to be. If you do want to see and enjoy, please be present. Now, for those who are coming to the Abbey for the first time, you may find it a little difficulty to get there. So I am giving you two main routes. Those using the Mont Fortune, when you get to the Cicero Road, opposite the Cicero bus stop, you'll also see a sign mark capital management. You go down this road, you will see two roads. Ignore them. <laughs> and you enter on the third road. What them? Well, I'm just saying. It. <laughs> you enter on the third. You enter on the third road. Keep on driving. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Not most people, I didn't know. <laughs> okay. okay, those using the medium, the highway is very, is easy. You, when you get to the first long tunnel, you continue. There's a second small one. <laughs> And when you get to the roundabout by the third tunnel, you make a left. You will also see a government billboard. You make a left, and in driving, you will come to an, a black iron gate. You enter, and you are at the abbey. You'll see cars, and you'll also see churchgoers. Now concerning the breakfast. As I said, it is only $35. I'll be passing along, getting a commitment from each one of you. And if you do not attend, you will have to honor this commitment 
because the nuns cater by the numbers that I give to them. So please make an effort to attend. The church service is 7.45 on the 19th at the Abbey. The Cultural Development Foundation, in collaboration with the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee for 2020, presents the Sir Derek Walcott Memorial Lecture, which will be delivered by Mr. McDonald Dixon. Diverse through his Barbadian, Trinidadian, Irish, and St. Lucian roots, we feverishly embrace him as yet another distinguished son of the soil. A prolific and multi-talented figure in the Caribbean artistic world, Mr. Dixon is a profound writer and poet himself. Who work, whose work blossoms on seemingly everything that touches him, particularly the human condition. From his perspective, nature and man are one. Mr. Dixon was no stranger to the late Sir Derek Walcott and his family. This, this year, for this year, sorry, the lecture promises to be enthralling and thought-provoking through its, through its poetic justice. We invite the general public to be a part of this lecture on Tuesday, the 21st of January at 7.30 p.m. The lecture will be held at the conference room of the Financial Administrative Center located at Point Seraphine Castries. The lecture is absolutely free and open to the general public. Last year we had a phenomenal turnout. We're hoping to see many more persons participate this year. So I invite you all and the wider public to be a part of it. Thank you. And sorry, most importantly, the lecture this year is entitled After Derek Walcott, The St. Lucia Poetic Tradition. The Steel Pan Evolution Revolution Acceptance. This is the title of our exhibition for this year, Margot Thomas representing the National Archives. The Sports and Entertainment Archives was established in 2016, and since then, the National Archives has continued to augment these holdings, which comprise a very vibrant and colorful collection. As its contribution to Nobel Laureate Festival under the theme Vision 2020 Celebrating Excellence, the National Archives will be mounting an exhibition at its building at VG, and it will be launched on January the 22nd, 2020, and it will continue until the 31st of March. And this exhibition is also part of our National Archives Month. The steel pan, listen very carefully please, is the only musical instrument that was invented during the 20th century and it originated from the Caribbean. This is reason enough for us to celebrate. Coming out of the slums of Trinidad and Tobago using recycled oil drums before recycling became the norm worldwide, the musical and magical journey of the humble instrument has achieved worldwide acclaim. Using photographs, newspaper clippings, posters, three-dimensional objects, we shall provide relevant information to give insight into the origins of the steel pan, the turmoil con um, surrounding the introduction of the steel pan into St. Lucia, pioneers of steel pan music, women in pan, major steel pan orchestras, an acceptance of the steel pan internationally, and more importantly, within the ecclesiastical sphere. Thank you. We shall have a great time, and I want all of you to come to the exhibition, because it will be a learning experience for you. My name is Nasri Jodi Fanes. I am from South Louis Community College and I'm pleased on behalf of the college to present our activities for Nobel Laureate Festival 2020. As the institution which bears the name of one of our laureates, we take very seriously our role in celebrating both laureates. As you will see, the varied activities that we are presenting that will celebrate both the arts, which Sir Arthur held very dear, and pay tribute to Sir Arthur himself. So two of our national events, our signature events that's a staple on the calendar for Nobel Laureate Festival, 
uh, the Nobel Laureate, the Memorial Lecture, the Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture, which this year is slated for Thursday, 23rd January at 7.30 p.m. at the Finance Administrative Center in Castries, Point Surf in Castries. This year, the lecture will be presented by Mr. Timothy Antoine, who is the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, and the title of the lecture is Socioeconomic Transformation by Invitation and Innovation. The lecture is absolutely free, and we invite the public to come and hear what he has to um, offer, especially in a time when we are looking again at Sartha's um, industrialization by invitation and have our own um, CIP program, which some claim to mirror what Sir Arthur offered as a way to development. So I expect it to be a very interesting discourse. After the lecture, we usually have engagement between the audience and the, the lecturer, so we look forward to that. The other staple on our calendar that is very, very important and that sort of closes off the week of Nobel Laureate is the wreath lane ceremony, which takes place on the campus of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. And that takes place on Friday, the 24th of January from 10 a.m. And this is a ceremony that pays tributes to, tribute to the works, lives and times of both Sir Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Walcott. As you know now, the campus site is the burial ground for both of our laureates. So we lay, we lay wreaths at the, at the grave site and we pay tribute to the laureates. The college also engages both its students and staff in several activities, and we begin our week of celebration on Wednesday, the 22nd of January, with a academic discourse that this year is a panel discussion entitled Artistic Revolution. And that discourse will see a mixed heterogeneous groups, um, group representing various art forms um, from architecture to theater to music, and they will be discussing the progressive vision for the arts, especially in 2020. Um, the academic discourse is also free. It will be held at the Sehi Room, um, Room 1, at the campus, and we are also going to be live streaming the event. So as we get closer, we will provide the site where people can join us, because it's during the day, it's at 12.30 p.m., um, where we engage our staff and our students. So the group will comprise faculty members as well as um, artistic people from the community to be on that panel discussing where our arts are going in in St. Lucia. On that same Wednesday, we also host a student-led original theater production. We've been doing that for the last two years, and we've had great success. Uh, we are very proud of the students who are putting this together. They write, direct, produce the play. This last year, 2019, the first play that we put on actually made it to Carafesta for 2019. So we want to applaud our students for that. We want to encourage um, that artistry. So this year, the students have been at it from summer. They have written a play entitled God's Earth, and it's a dramatic creation with unique Roman mythological elements married with the local St. Lucian elements. So we look forward to having the general public with standing room only at the National Cultural Center on Wednesday, 22nd January at 7.30 p.m. Given the costs that are incurred um, to put on such a production, we have a small admission fee of $10. So we want to encourage you to come in and support our students. It is very important for that to continue through our generations, and the students have been very, very engaged, very, very committed. They have just spent part of their Christmas break um, in rehearsals, so we really want to give them that support and have a full house um, for the production of God's Earth. Following um, that activity, um, that, that's on Wednesday, we have those two activities, then we have the uh, memorial lecture on Thursday, and I want to say a special thank you to Bank of St. Lucia for coming on board and sponsoring that event, because it does come at a cost. We're happy to be able to engage professionals from around the world this year. They're coming from the Caribbean, but they have come from the UK, from the US in the past, and we're thankful to Her Excellency for always being able to source um, someone who is able to add to the discourse. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, and Mrs. La Corbinier for your assistance in putting this on.
Um, our other activity that we normally have is a student discourse that we do in conjunction with NTN. We partner with them and we engage our students. And this year we will be looking at Vision 2020 and having this, the students present their ideas, opinions and on the vision for youth in St. Lucia. And we have to announce the date when that will be televised, but we will be recording on January 17th at the NTN studios. This year we have a new activity that is the brainchild of our new principal, Dr. Keith Nuss, and it is coined SALCC Race to the Morn. So we want to challenge every individual in St. Lucia, challenge your fitness. We will be racing from the Derek Walcott Square, from One Nobel Laureate, to Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, and we will go, be going via the Latok route. So it's a challenge, but we won't subject you to, to the morn. Um, so from one Nobel Laureate to the other, Derek Walcott Square, Viola Talk, we are encouraging you to be healthy. You can start training from now. The race is our final activity, a little bit outside of our dates. It's on Saturday, the 1st of February, and we start at 6 a.m from the Derek Walcott Square. So the challenge has been placed. We are moving from the arts. A healthy society is important to maintain everything that we do. So we are encouraging you to start to train for that. We will have a small registration fee that we will announce as, as the plans go on that will help with the water distribution, t-shirts, etc. So please look forward to that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. I want to encourage you to participate in all of the activities. And please feel free to visit the college um, social media pages and, of course, our Nobel Laureate Festival page where more information will be provided. My name is Don Howell, Principal, St. Mary's College. The Nobel Laureate Festival will not be complete if it did not feature Literary Night, a theatrical production organized by St. Mary's College. As the organization that nurtured our two Nobel laureates during a critical part of their lives, we think it important that we participate in the celebration of their work and to make a contribution to this festival. St. Mary's College continues to share the vision of the Nobel Laureate Committee. Literary Night this year is special for us as St. Mary's College will also, is also celebrating 130 years since it, it opened its doors to educating young men in St. Lucia. This year we are going to feature the college boy. The boy that you see in black and white. We're going to present the life of the college boy in living color. We're going to show you the experience of Sir Arthur and Sir Derek when they entered the, the gates of St. Mary's College. The experience of a college boy today and the struggle, the, the nurturing that they undergo as they go through their developmental stages through the years at St. Mary's College. Hence, Literary Night will be held under the theme, black and white in color. Ladies and gentlemen, the event will be held on January 24th at the National Cultural Center, please come out and support our young men. Come out and support the, the work that they do. This is part of nurturing and building the holistic young man for our society. And we need your support. We need all stakeholders, our old boys, everyone, to come out and make the Nobel Laureate Festival complete with St. Mary's College Literary Night. My name is Popetua, Popetua James. I represent our committee, the local committee, Denry Development Foundation, organizing Nobel laureates for a number of years now. Um, we saw it fitting to be part of this wonderful celebration because those, the men that we feature are, in our opinion, very we are honored to be part of this celebration because they are part of us and we are proud to be part of what is happening in St. Lucia as far as our laureates are concerned. Um, this year, like every other year, we come together as a small committee um, to celebrate. Um, we continue to work with the schools um, 
We encourage the teachers to put on the programs. You know, our financial resources are limited, so we cannot go all the way in as much as we would have loved to. But um, we encourage our teachers. We work with the, all the schools in the Denry Basin, and um, they have been responding very well. Um, so much so that we have been seeing results. Um, some of our guest speakers have been have adopted some of the schools and working with our young men and women of the schools. So we are doing well in that regard. Um, we have on the 25th of January this year, our program will be on just on one in one night. You know, um, it's a packed night because we need to limit it to, to the resources that we have. It's a small committee, as I say, we don't have too many people working with us. So on the night we have, as always, our annual lecture. We have identified our speaker. Um, we will be having presentations as well, literary and otherwise. Um, we also will be featuring a local folk band all that will be on the night. I'm hoping that we can have enough time before midnight to do all of that. Um, we usually do. We usually, you know, start early at 7 o'clock. And um, our Denry people look forward to it, you know, look forward to the night. They continue to ask what's happening this year. And I'm very proud to know that we are contributing to the festival um, and that the people are benefiting. We can see that they are be being made aware, they are being sensitized, they know more about our laureates. And so that is what we do. That is what we, we will continue to do. Um, of course, we will not end without our cocktail. We always have a laureate's cocktail on the evening. And this is, this is what we are having. On. We invite you to come to, to share with us, both in terms of our lecture, come and learn from our speaker, come and share with us, come and tell us what you know as well. What we didn't share with you, let us know what you can tell us. And because we will be having a number of young people there from the schools, from the community. So we invite you to come, share with us, and then at least encourage, we need a little encouragement too. We need a little bit of encouragement, you know, to, to, you know, so that we can continue to do what we are doing. So it's on the 25th of January, this is a Saturday afternoon, um, Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, and the venue, it lends itself well to the cocktail. It's an outdoor, it's a chateau heritage, and um, I'm hoping that I can see a few faces on, the, on that evening. How many people know the name Marilyn Baptist? Yeah, <laughs> that might be part of the choice. Eh? How many people know Lady Lynn? All of us. All of you. Okay, so you know the name Lady Lynn, but you don't know the name Marilyn Baptist. Well, Marilyn Baptist is actually Lady Lynn. And once we speak of Lady Lynn, we speak of Calypso. Lady Lynn this year celebrates 40 years in the Calypso arena. And because of that, Lady Lynn has come out with a brilliant idea where she is going to exhibit all of her work, music sheets, the music, her awards, everything that encompasses Lady Lynn when it comes to Calypso. And with that, we have had a planning committee, which, is work, which of course is working feverishly with her to ensure that that takes place. So come Tuesday, the 20th of January, to Friday, the 31st of January, at the city, Kasri City Council, they call it what, um, the mayor's oh, office, they call it everything now. But we know it is referred to, or more people, most people know it as a town hall. So there, we will be featuring all of Lady Lynn's work, whether it is the music sheets, the writing, everything. Now over 40 years, she has actually sung over 100 and something songs there. Eh? over 100 and something songs. And she has worked with a number of producers, writers, and so on. And as I said, all of that will be featured during that work. So we are looking forward to the support of everybody, and we are very grateful to the Ministry of Education, who we wrote to, and they have agreed to get most of the schools involved. So we are hoping that a lot of the students would be coming to actually view that exhibition. It's free. And I just hope that we'll see everybody Tuesday the 20th, where Calypso is going to be featured, National Archives has Stillburn, and of course, 
if you talk about the arts and sun, you cannot leave out Calypso. So we look forward to everybody supporting us. On Thursday, 6 February 2020, the UE Open Campus St. Lucia will host its fourth annual Patricia Isman Literary Workshop. This workshop is dedicated to literary icon and long-serving UE lecturer, Dr. Patricia Isman, in whose name a scholarship for St. Lucian students studying B. Ed. Secondary and B. Ed. Liter Literacy Studies at the Open Campus St. Lucia site has been established. To date, three students have benefited from this scholarship, which was generously provided by her sister, Ms. Hester Ismond. The Patricia Ismond Literary Workshop will be facilitated by St. Lucian-born Dr. Antonia MacDonald. A former lecturer at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Dr. MacDonald currently serves as a professor of literature and associate dean at St. George's University in Grenada. This year, the Patricia Isman Literary Workshop is dedicated exclusively to teachers of Cape literatures in English. The intention is that the skills obtained will be transferable to a variety of instructional modalities. While we will focus specifically on literatures in English, the aim is that the teachers will be able to apply the knowledge gained to other CAPE subjects. These teachers will in turn serve as a resource for the CXC CSEC English teachers in St. Lucia. That way, the benefits from this workshop can be maximized. The UE Open Campus St. Lucia will be working with the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School and the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College to make this workshop a success on Thursday, 6 February 2020 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the UE Open Campus St. Lucia site located at Montfortune. My name is Cecilia Lacobinier. I'm, I'm the secretary of the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee and has been and I have been that for a few years now. I'm here to present on behalf of Labawi Development, who are unable to be here to present on, um, for themselves. Now, Labawi, have, they have been a staple of the Nobel Laureate Festival um, activities. And this year, they are presenting two activities for no, the Nobel Laureate Festival. The first is um, a continuation of an activity they held last year, called Paint the Village. And it's a camp and masterclass with Jonathan Gladin. I think a lot of you may know his artwork with the signature JAG -J Jag. He's, he paints scenes from Labrie, the children's, um, the culture all around the Labrie area. Now, Labrie, the art community have always felt that uh, St. Lucian artists are at a bit of a disadvantage compared with artists in countries where there are countless workshops and conferences and competitions where there is an opportunity for them to learn from more experienced professionals, for them to network and gain exposure. In recent years, artists participating in Paint the Village in Library have noted that they have benefited from the exchange with and guidance from Jonathan Gladin. Library therefore will be holding will be holding an overnight camp and masterclass at Mont Leblanc, a site managed by the Labry Envi Environment and Heritage Con Conservation of Labry, which would allow for painting when the light is best. And for the artist community that is early morning and late afternoon known as the golden hours. Now this activity will be held from Friday the 24th of January 2020 from 5 p.m. until midday Saturday the 25th of January 2020 and that will be at the Mont Leblanc Natural Heritage Site in Labrie. Now all that will be on the Facebook pages and um, you'll see the contact numbers for an email for the, um, the, the coordinators of the event so if you want to take part to let them know. The second activity is a workshop to design a community history project. Now it's important for any community to be aware of its history and to learn from it.
but the history of Labrie and other communities in St. Lucia will never be written if we wait for a professional historian to do it. Labrie therefore proposes to embark on a participatory research and writing project that would document, <coughs> excuse me, the social, economic, political, and environmental history of the community. Now, it's an ambitious project that will require specific expertise and funding. As part of the festival, a one-day workshop will be convened with community leaders and resource people, especially historians and individuals with experience in the collection and documentation of oral history to design the project. The output of the workshop would be a concept and a budget, which would then be submitted to potential sponsors and partners. So sponsors, potential sponsors, I hope you're all listening to this. This could also serve as a pilot project that other communities could emulate in the future. Technical assistance for this is going to be sought from the National Trust, and I believe they may have been contacted already and are on board. The date for this activity is Saturday the 25th of January 2020 and it will be held at the Vellon John Administrative Centre in Labory from 2 to 7 p.m. 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we hope all interested people would take part besides the members of the Labory community. And every time you say Derek Walker, everybody knows is where it is, it's in St. Lucia. You have to come to St. Lucia to find Derek. You know what I'm saying? So as a chef, it was quite nice that when he came to Ladera, I said, well, obviously he's accomplished his Nobel laureate. What can I create for him, you know, in his name? You know, I mean, the idea is our national dish is salt fish and green banana. So I said, well, why not create a Dirk Walker fish cake? So, t so the Dirk Walker fish cake isn't just flour and water. It's, a, it's our green bananas. So it's green banana mashed, combined with salted fish, topped with a salt fish salsa. Today you can try it to the back. Um, I gave it to Derek when he came to Ladera all those years ago, and he was very impressed by it. He actually mentioned it in a couple of news, newspaper articles around the world. I think I saw something in the Observer in London about this fish cake. So now, wherever I travel, I travel from London, Martinique, wherever I cook, there's always a Derek Walker fish cake on my menu. So um, it was quite fitting with this idea. Um, also, my restaurant in Sufria, for the last five years now, we've been doing um, Nobel Laureate Week. Unbeknownst to many people on the calendar, we do poetry and cuisine at the restaurant. So the idea, you can come down to Sufria, and now that I'm in Rodney Bay, taking pressure, oh my God, pressure. <laughs> I'm now in Rodney Bay. We intend to start in the next couple of weeks where persons with poetry information, love the cuisine idea, can come and sit down and share their poetry with the audience. I mean, this is really a, a fitting opportunity to showcase what this gentleman has done for St. Lucia. Uh, especially this year as well, it was 90th anniversary, it would have been 90 this year. I think it's fitting to sort of recognize him as a world-renowned leader as well as a um, literature person. Um, and as a chef, I feel very proud to be involved in this whole process going forward. Um, I hope you'll stop by the restaurant, you'll taste the food there. And of course, you know, we keep celebrating Derek. I think he has to be celebrated every year. Sometimes we recognize people in their passing when they're right here in front of you, we don't remember who they are. But now it's passed, I think we need to even sell it even more. So with that said, I really appreciate this opportunity to share with you. And again, thank you for your time. And um, try the fish cake. It's, um, it's made with his love. Thank you for sharing the love. You may even say share the love, but it means St. Lucia, STL. Share the love. I'd like to invite, uh, first of all, Mr. Bert Smith. Um, who is the country manager of First Citizens Investment Services Limited to present the check to our chair, Her Excellency Dame Palette Fuizi. Why don't you hear my?